Today we have this really cool number theory problem from the 1998 International Math Olympiad, and it requires us to determine the positive integers x and y such that xy squared plus y plus 7 divides x squared y plus x plus y. Now, what do we mean when we say the one integer divides another? Well, a divides b implies that b divided by a is an element of the set of integers. And there's a property of divisibility that's pretty easy to see, and that property is going to solve pretty much the entire problem. So, c divides a, and if c divides another integer b, then this implies that c divides this linear combination of a and b, that is n times a, plus m times b, where n and m are both integers. So it's given that this integer divides this integer, and we also know that every integer divides itself, because if you just take an integer and divide it by itself, you get 1, which is, of course, an integer. So this means that xy squared plus y plus 7 divides xy squared plus y plus 7. So we know that this integer divides itself and we also know that it divides this other integer here meaning that it divides a linear combination of them so we can write that xy squared plus y plus 7 divides n times x squared y plus x plus y plus m times xy squared plus y plus 7 and since this divisibility is valid for all the integers n and m we can pick any integer values of n and m that will make the, the structure of the number being divided much better, much nicer. And what exactly would make life easier for us? Well, I would like to get rid of the quadratic terms. So that's pretty straightforward all we have to do is let n equal to negative y and let's say that m equals x and that should do the trick so we have xy squared plus y plus 7 divides negative x squared y squared uh, minus xy minus y squared plus x squared y squared plus xy plus 7x Okay, this is actually pretty nice. The reason for that is that not only do the quadratic terms cancel out, so do the other product terms. And we're left with this much more palatable expression that x square, uh, xy squared plus y plus 7 divides negative y squared plus 7x. Okay, cool. So we know that this integer divides this other integer. In other words, we know that negative y squared plus 7x because x and y are integers is also an integer. And because it's an integer, there are three possibilities. It could be that negative y squared plus 7x is equal to zero. It could be that negative y squared plus 7x is positive, or it could be that negative y squared plus 7x is negative. So let's examine all three cases. First up, let's look at the case where negative y squared plus 7x equals 0. Well, this implies that y squared equals 7x. And remember, we need x and y to be integers. So that means after taking the square root, the right side needs to be, again, a positive integer. And that's only possible if x equals 7 times the square of some integer r. So this implies that y would be equal to 7 times 7 49, the square root, and the square root of r squared can be written as 7 times the absolute value of r. Okay, cool. So that means we have one set of solutions. That is x, y equals 7 r squared times 7 times the absolute value of r, where r is some integer. Okay, now let's check out the case for negative y squared plus 7x being less than 0, which is equivalent to y squared minus 7x being positive. Now, here's the thing. For this integer to divide this integer, or equivalently divide its negative, that is y squared minus 7x, which we know here is positive, for this integer to divide the other integer, the one boxed in orange, written in green, we know that the integer being divided should be bigger than 
or equal to what's actually dividing it. So we can write that y squared minus 7x is greater than or equal to xy squared plus y plus 7. This is the inequality that divisibility makes sense of, right? But the problem is that this inequality contradicts the other. The two inequalities contradict each other. Why is that so? Well, we know that y squared is greater than y squared minus 7x because x is a positive integer. And because x is a positive integer, this thing here is going to be greater than y squared. So this inequality implies that y squared is greater than y squared, which is, of course, false. That means we cannot have y squared minus 7x positive. So the only case left to investigate is this one here. 7x minus y squared being positive. So let's check this out now. So invoking the same logic as before, we know that 7x minus y squared should be greater than xy squared plus y plus 7. And we know that 7x is greater than this thing. And we know that this thing is greater than xy squared. So all of this implies that 7x is greater than xy squared which implies that 7 is greater than y squared. Okay, cool. So what does this actually mean for the y variable? Well, y is a positive integer, so the only possible values of y are 1 and 2, because 1 squared is 1, y and 2 squared is 4. The other square, that's 3 squared, is greater than 7, so we're going to have to discard all of that. And now we have two more subcases to investigate. Y could be 1 or Y could be 2. So let's check out the case of Y being 1 first. So first up, we apply the case of Y equal to 1, which means that X plus 8 divides X squared plus X plus 1. Okay, cool. So we have another divisib divisibility problem to work out. And we're going to use the same mechanics that we used before, or used earlier anyway. So we know that x plus 8 divides this integer, and we know that x plus 8 divides itself. So again, we invoke the linear combination of these two integers and write this as x plus 8 divides n times x plus 8 plus m times x squared plus x plus 1. Once again, I'm trying to get rid of the quadratic terms. So let's pick n equal to x and m equal to negative 1, which gives us x plus 8 divides uh, x squared plus 8x minus x squared minus x minus 1. So here's some cancellation taking place, and we have x plus 8 divides 8x, or rather 7x, because you have this negative x term as well. So divide 7x minus 1. Okay, cool. Now let's make this even simpler by eliminating the x term as well. Again, I'm going to invoke that same linear combination property. And we know that x plus 8 divides n times this integer, that's 7x minus 1, plus m times itself. So eliminating the linear term in x means that I should pick n equal to 1 and m equal to negative 7. So I have x plus 8 divides 7x minus 1 minus 7x uh, minus 56, right? So that means I have x plus 8 divides cancellation negative 57 and if it divides negative 57 it's going to divide 57 as well and 57 has a pretty neat factorization we know that this here equals 3 times 19 and the other factor is 57 so we have some possibilities here we have x plus 8 it could be equal to 3 it could be equal to 19, or it could be equal to 57. And out of these three cases, the first one is one we're going to reject, because if x plus 8 equals 3, then that means x equals negative 5, but we're looking for positive integer solutions to x and y. 
So that means x could be either 11 or x could be 49. So yeah, those are the solutions corresponding to the case where y equals 1. And I'll leave it to you to verify that for the case of y equals 2, there are no solutions whatsoever. So there you have it. That's our number problem solved. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.